Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, fun fact about me, I've never actually art gouged, but I've always wanted to, so what better place to learn than here at the Weld Lab with my good buddy Austin. We're together today and he's conned me into teaching him something new, so let's do it. Alright dude, so check it out. This process is not all that tricky. It's actually really easy to set up. A couple of things that you're going to need as far as for arc gouging or CAC. That is the acronym for it. Just like SMAW is for stick welding, we have carbon arc cutting. The point of this process is to take away the grinder, get rid of it. We've got a new process that uses a carbon rod. This rod here is made out of almost complete graphite. It's all carbon. That's almost pure carbon right there as far as that graphite is concerned. So instead of a filler metal being in it, we're not going to be depositing any metal, but we are still going to be creating that crazy arc with this fancy looking torch right here, the carbon arc torch hooked up to compressed air it's going to be blowing a bunch of air out of these little holes and that's basically just going to push that molten metal up and out of the way and get it off the plate whatever we're doing now don't get me lying here i'm not necessarily the professional of when it comes to carbon arc cutting but i need a big machine and i need all the beans so i usually run anywhere like 300 plus on the amperage and as far as the size of carbon arc electrode you're using is kind of depends on the application you're running they make them really small to get into really precise spots and they make really big ones so you can move a lot of metal so that's basically it all we got to do is stab one of these electrodes in here turn on compressed air get the machine on all the beans hit the air touch the metal we remove it sounds easy enough to me so we've got everything pretty much hooked up. I use this a lot whenever I was in welding school for removing backing straps off my plates. The biggest thing is you're not allowed to touch this piece of material. This is a very violent process and it takes away so much metal so quickly, but I'm gonna teach you how to do that carefully. Not only that, we're gonna try to do just one single pass of removing that entire weld in like 20 seconds, you know? That's quick. So before we get into it, again, the fact that we're using so many amps, we got this machine turned all the way up so that it can remove as much metal as we want. It's gonna be uber loud, super duper loud with that compressed air attached. So some earplugs, not a bad idea, man, not a bad idea. Not only that, but the compressed air that's coming up through is gonna be throwing so many sparks, all that molten metal, hopefully away from us. We're gonna point away from us, mm -hmm. right? But we still wanna be protected. So we're gonna have our Cayman gloves. We're gonna be gloved up. We've got our FR gear on. We've got long sleeve shirts. We've got our welding hoods. It's gonna be bright. Shade 10 minimum for art gouging for sure. So make sure you got all those things. You can check out all of those links down in the description below for our good friends from Outlaw Leather, Ariat Work. Same thing with Lincoln Electric. We got a lot of good partners to help us make some content for the channel. And we can't do it, of course, without you all. So let's get to it. Let's do some art gouging. Yes. I do think there's only really one good way to hold this art gouger. You got to make sure that there's holes on this. It looks a lot like a stick stinger, just really bulky, because of course we got compressed air running straight through here. It's very important where those holes are orientated that they're on the bottom side of your electrode right here. So as you go, that air is blowing from the bottom and it's throwing everything away, okay? If it's coming on the top, you're gonna push all your metal back in and you're just gonna make soup. We don't wanna make soup, guys. We're trying to blow the soup away. It's a lot like stick welding. We're gonna try to maintain a certain angle. I wanna lean back a good ways because I want that air to blow it up and away. And we're always gonna push it. There we go. What we're looking for is that line of fusion into this plate. Now I'm not really trying to get too detailed with it yet. I just want to show the amount of damage that this thing can do and remove. I'll let Bo have the other side. Hey man. What'd you think of that, dude? You did good. I mean, it was very fun. It was quick and easy. I do think that I went too deep, though. It's like, satisfying, isn't it? It's very satisfying. That is probably the, it's, it's so easy to remove metal. It's so fun. Like, in all this crap, and it's easy to get off there. You could take just the end of a file or something. If you do it right, 
and you have that air set up properly, all that stuff, all that draw should be able to be removed easily. That's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna make sure we gouge off the rest of this thing. We're just gonna rip it off and then be a little bit more careful on this backing strap. All right. We're just gonna get it off there, man. So just rip at it. You see, I went really deep, especially yeah. back in here. Just go ahead and work a little bit more deeper on your side. You're looking for a fine line where that plate meets this plate. Ready? Give her. I went deep. Yeah, we can see that line though. You see it? Oh yeah, I do. You can see that line clear as day. That's what you're looking for while you're gouging. Ah, very nice. All right, so now you know what it looks like to remove metal, right? We took a weld out of a fillet weld. Yeah. Specifically looking for that line of lack of fusion, line of no fusion anymore. But you want to just find it. As soon as you find it, you don't dig anymore. So you got to think about where it's located before you just get to digging, Trout. Because all that right there, that mess on that parent metal, you could get yourself into some serious trouble or just cost yourself a lot more time on whatever you're working on. Now, when I was in welding school, we would remove backing straps. This is gonna really teach you guys how not to damage the parent metal. Because if you do, my instructor wouldn't let me bend my test anymore. Yeah. So you had a lot of incentive not to hit that. We're gonna remove this entire backing strap off of it. These little welds, everything. It's welded all the way down. We know that, so we're gonna see some fusion in the center of this joint. We're gonna see it as we sweep it away. You're gonna see no fusion, well, no fusion, as we just rip this backing strap. Turn it all to pudding, throw it all that way. All we're gonna do is just little sweeping motions, okay? Just go ahead and start with that little piece of tab. And then I'm just going to work this way and get it all off. Okay. So you can see we made a mess. This is that soup I'm talking about, right? If you don't get enough of it, especially the amount of metal we're trying to remove, then you're gonna get a lot. So you gotta be really conscientious of the distance to that electrode. You can see this backing strap from where it is. This is the closest point that I've gotten to hitting that, that base metal. You can see that plate underneath. Yeah. And there's weld there, still all through here, there's weld. And I haven't removed it from this side yet either. You can always take off more, you can't put it back. So just kind of clean it as you go, get a bunch of it off, clean it up, get a bunch of it off, clean it up, get a bunch of it off, and then see where you got to get. You want to get it close. Even if you have this much metal and you're like, all right, I can grind it now, then that's what you'll do. Okay. Feel like that's the soup? That's the soup you want me to avoid? So right? as you start getting really close, you'll yeah. notice like I'm really close to that air, but it's making soup. There is an optimal distance right in here. You're just getting a little too short. You need to push some more electrode out. Okay. And it's one of the times it's like, all right, there's enough crap in the way. So let's go ahead and clean it up. You know how you're getting like it's kind of sound like it's stubbing out a little bit, like pop, 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 instead of yeah. you're just pushing into it a little bit. Really Too hard. Like you gotta float it a little. Like, like feather it? Yeah, feather it and float it on top of that surface. You're just grazing it. You're not trying to shove it in. Hey. It 
It's looking good, man. You're hogging it out. Soup! See, that's what happens. But no air. No air. That's why they call me Campbell's. <laughs> Okay, now that you've got most of the backing strap removed, we still don't want to have to grind that much, right? Yeah. So we want to just touch it up. It should move a little faster because there's not as much strap there, but try to get as much as you can off without touching that plate. Okay. You got in it. You got in there. Did I? Yes, sir. It's really easy to do it. We'll clean it up, I'll show you. All right, so you can kind of see it. You are doing a really good job of getting all that metal off, but anywhere, anywhere there's a divot or a low spot, like right here, that big divot and this divot. Yeah, I think those are the two biggest ones that I'm seeing. Uh, you know, and this being a probably right where that bin strap is going to be taken from. It's just one of those things you gotta be careful about. I will say that art gouging probably isn't the most efficient and clean way and safest way of removing a backing strap. But as far as from a teaching perspective on how to use the process and being careful with it, I think this is a good test for anybody to get better with art gouging. All right, Bo, I got you a little groove weld here. The goal when you're doing a gouge like this is to try to maintain that original groove angle that this was beforehand. So typically you'd start in the middle and then you widen things out. And remember, if you got a repair right in here, then typically your whole area of repair is probably gonna be three to four or five times as big, uh, depending on how big the issue is. Get to digging, buddy. Yes, sir. So you can tell what clean metal looks like, right? Yeah. All right, keep digging. What do you think of our gouging, man? Look how much that was awesome. Getting after it you could do. I know. It's a really cool process and I think it's really fun and I love teaching it, but I sure as heck hate doing it in confined spaces. I bet, I bet. Guys, if you wanna see some more art gouging, if you got some cool ideas or if you got any more information on art gouging that we didn't cover today, drop it in the, down in the comments down below. Uh, be sure to also click out on those Links in our description. We got great partners like Lincoln Electric, Area Outlaw Leather, and Cayman Gloves. They got all kind of different deals and stuff for you all. They help us make some of this content, and of course, we can't do it without y'all. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next weld. Yeah.